This is the story of Gnarly the Tree. And oh, what a twisted tale it is. The day you were born, you were lucky. Your mother gave you your name. Gnarly wasn't that lucky. He had to wait a long time before he got his name. Gnarly began his life sometime in the early 13th century. That was 800 years ago. And for 400 years, he was alone. Nothing else grew around him, and that made him sad. Then in the 17th century, little white pine seedlings began growing all around Gnarly, and that made him happy. The trees grew tall and straight, but not Gnarly. He grew short and crooked. And the trees made fun of him and called him worthless, because he wasn't tall and straight like they were. When the white pines were about 100 years old and had grown to over 100 feet tall, the tallest and straightest trees were slashed with the mark of the king's broad arrow. And that meant no one could cut them down because they belonged to the king of England. In the early part of the 18th century, the tall trees with the king's mark were cut down by the king's loggers and hauled away by oxen. And then they were loaded onto ships and sent to England to make masts for the king's fleet of sailing ships. Gnarly was alone again for a while, when all of a sudden new seedlings sprung up around them. Seedlings grew into fine-looking trees. They marked Gnarly too, and called him ugly for spoiling their beautiful forest with his twisted-looking shape. Then one day, they too were cut down, and the logs were pulled away by mules. They were used to make log cabins for the settlers who arrived by sailing ships with those tall, straight wooden masts. Gnarly was alone again until new seedlings sprung up around him. The seedlings grew tall and straight like the other trees before them. But they too ridiculed Gnarly, calling him good for nothing, telling him that he was of no value to anyone for anything. Gnarly thought the trees might be right. Maybe he was worthless because whenever the lumberjacks came to cut down the trees, they ignored him, or worse, laughed at him. The lumberjacks cut those trees down too, and a tractor pulled the logs away and took them to a paper mill. The logs were used to make paper for books and newspapers and other things. Poor Gnarly wasn't even good enough to make toilet paper. Gnarly was getting taller and fuller now, but again he was alone, until more seedlings sprung up. About fifty years later, the tall straight trees were bigger than Gnarly, and they teased him and called him useless, because he didn't have one straight branch anywhere. Then one day, they too were cut down, and loaded by a special truck, and taken away to a sawmill. Gnarly was alone again, but not for long. This time, no seedlings came up. Instead, building lumber from the sawmill was stacked all around him. Soon, houses were built, and children came and loved climbing Gnarly and swinging from his branches. Finally, Gnarly was noticed, but most of all, he was useful. Then one day, the houses were gone, and soon, heavy machinery was busy day and night digging. And then bushes and trees were planted, and grass covered the ground all around Gnarly. And that's when Gnarly finally got his name. He became the main attraction in the city's park that was even named in his honor. People came from all over to see Gnarly and take photos of him. TV news filled him, and old people who remembered swinging on his branches came with their walking canes to see him once again. National Geographic wrote articles about Gnarly. He even appeared on the cover of Time magazine. And people wore t-shirts with his picture on them. He even had a cereal made just for children. Gnarly was indeed a famous tree for a very long time. And maybe in the 23rd century, when Gnarly would celebrate his 1000th birthday, 
people will still love him, and they might even build a city around him and call it Gnarly City. I don't know how long Gnarly will live, but I do know that some of his bristled cone pine tree cousins lived to be over 5,000 years. According to Science Magazine, this is what the first trees looked like 400 million years ago. It was trees that gave food so the dinosaurs could eat. Trees give food for giraffes and elephants to eat. And for koala bears too. Trees give us lots of different fruits like apples and oranges and my favorite coconuts. Trees also give shade for lions from the hot African sun and a place for birds to make their nests. And if there were no trees, then Geppetto would have to use a pickle for Pinocchio's nose. Oh wait, there wouldn't even be a Pinocchio. Trees have helped all living things on earth in so many ways. But the best way the trees have helped us is that they clean poisons from the air and supply oxygen so we can breathe. I hope you enjoyed Gnarly's story, and the next time you take a deep breath of air, give credit to a tree, and go hug a tree in thanks for what it gives us, the very air we breathe. I hope you enjoyed my story, and if you'd like to see more, check out my Facebook page at Papastash the Storyteller, or my YouTube channel at Papastash. Thanks for watching. Now go hug a tree.